Um, so I want to touch on an issue which I think can probably relate to a lot of people online. Um, it's a somewhat personal issue because it's based on personal experience. Um, but I think it's very, very important. Very important, in fact. Extremely important. Um, because it ties to assertiveness. And for me, assertiveness is something that is... And that is being not just assertiveness in day-to-day -day situations, but generally as a path to inner confidence. What I want to discuss is that in life, we deal with people, okay? Unless you're a hermit, we deal with people. doesn't matter if you live in a big city or a small village, whether your social unit is small or big. Whether you have a thousand friends, two friends. Pretty much everyone has to deal with people now. The thing about being human is that we are part of it. We experience it. We experience the anger, the frustration, the joy, the happiness, the sadness, all of the human emotions that there are. And different people approach this in different ways. There are people out there who really are just selfish people. They genuinely don't care about others. And I do think, without getting into psychology, because I'm not a psychologist, but I do think that stems somewhat from, if not a lack of confidence, then something that has been going on in their background that has made them that way, that has made them into a selfish person. Because actually, on the surface, that would appear to be an easy way to address life, because you don't care how anyone else feels. The side effect, though, is you then become disliked and at some point i think that will come around and get to those people so as a pretext a lot of people reject that world outlook of not caring what others think now for me i i had a bit of a problem with this because i i in many ways i'm a normal guy but i have had certain struggles over the years with certain social situations and that's not coming from any sort of condition you know i don't have asperger's syndrome or anything like that it's just that i have at times been perhaps a little too sensitive but other times i have been let down and i feel i've been justified in feeling let down and that is a fact in life people let us down so there are extremely sensitive people then there's extremely, I don't give a damn, people. I think most people are somewhere in the middle. Because on one hand, we're told, don't be too sensitive, don't care about things. But on the other hand, no one wants to be a pushover. Again, this is human nature. No one wants to feel like they're a pushover. So what I've learned is that actually the whole approach of being a good guy or a good lady being a good person. It stems from this idea that we have to always put others first and we have to always think about how, the, how others feel. What I've kind of come to accept is that unless we put ourselves first, we can't actually be decent people anyway. And putting ourselves first doesn't mean being selfish and kind of telling the world to go to hell I don't care about anyone else it's about understanding that we are living with ourselves so everyone else everyone it doesn't matter how close that person is even if they're an intimate partner ultimately because and the reason I say that is because the simple reality is people can feel they're in love and then a relationship ends but one thing that never ends is that we are with ourselves that is constant from birth to death, we are with ourselves and there's nothing we can do about it. So liking yourself is actually essential. And that's not to say you could ever mould yourself. To... Excuse me. Just tap the keyboard there. You could never mould yourself to be perfect, ever. So I think it is practical to look at our shortcomings and try to address them. 
But what you shouldn't do is obsess about what others think to the point where you're constantly self-criticizing yourself. And, you know, getting a balance in these things isn't easy. Because I, I don't believe in the logical don't care what others think. I think there are very, very, very few people that genuinely, sincerely don't care at all what anyone else thinks. Say, for example, you have um, there's certain human nature aspects involved in this. If you're attracted to someone, that's an aspect that perhaps is sometimes not looked at. Uh, you want to be favorable in their eyes. So heterosexual guys would want to be favorable in the eyes of a lady that they're attracted to. It's basic human nature. Likewise with women and men, and you know this applies to everyone. I think that's basic human nature. So addressing things like that and getting over things like that sometimes isn't easy. It's like, also, if you have invested a lot into a friendship and then that friend lets you down, like they just no longer care and you can't work out why, or they drift out of your life, it can be hurtful. And there's no way to gloss that over because ultimately we are flesh and blood. We are not robots. I don't care how tough someone thinks they are. Nobody in the world, no matter how tough, when they are pushed enough, it's going to get to them. Take, for example, hard men, right? I don't know, gang members, guys who have a reputation, you know, criminals, whatever, just hard men, right? Guys who on the surface look to be tough as nails. And on the surface, they probably are tough as nails. But even guys like that are going to have a point where their manhood is challenged or their ego is challenged or something. Um, look at boxing, look at the world of boxing where get press conferences ending in fracases. Why? Because usually one guy's ego has been pushed too far. So the point you're making with that little analogy is just that everybody, 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 I can't underscore that enough, has a red line. And for some people that red line is a lot lower, for other people it's a lot higher, but everyone has a red line. And if you push someone enough, they'll stop. So someone then it isn't just people who appear to be tough on the surface, it's also people who appear super relaxed. And again, that might be their coping mechanism and it might be something that they've grown accustomed to and it's good for them. It's a good thing. But even people who seem super calm and they always avoid confrontation because they're very relaxed people, at some point there would be something that gets under their skin. And that's not to say people should test them. Of course not. But what I'm saying is there is basically a universal human condition that we all have a red line. So bearing that in mind, I, I really, really, really think that we have to first and foremost put ourselves first and say, what is good for me? What makes me happy? And if you're a social person, that that becomes a little bit complicated because if people are letting you down, then obviously that's going to make you unhappy. And putting yourself first isn't like, you know, uh, watching a film or getting chocolate or something isn't going to help you to get over that. But it will at least help you to not blame yourself. One thing I used to do is when I fell out with friends, I would always be the first to apologize. I would be so determined to make the peace that it's not that I would entirely see ground and say I was wrong or something, but I, I would prefer to make peace. I'd put that, I'd make that the priority over any sense of uh, ego. And that's not the same for everyone. But that was the situation with me. And it's something that I am um, trying to sort of address and say, well, wait a second. That person said hurtful things to me. They haven't apologized. Now, why should I? And it's not so much about being childish. It's about knowing that on this, you have certain rules for yourself. Then it isn't, you're not going to be happy. You're going to be frustrated and you're going to feel like people are walking over you. And I think we have to be consistent. So no matter how much we like someone, if they if they hurt us, don't don't let it go. I mean, don't make a huge issue out of it. I'm not saying go and start an argument for the sake of it. But 
it's not always a good thing to make the piece too fast, in my opinion. Because then you might make the piece and temporarily you'll think, I mean, this applies to me because I've done that with a friend. I made peace with her and it did feel good at first because it was all nice and rosy again. But then I started thinking, well, wait a second. I apologised to her. She said hurtful things to me. She didn't say a word of apology. And then I started feeling frustrated and started thinking, well, wait a second. That's actually a pretty selfish attitude. And then, um, well, then another argument broke out because I, I kind of brought up issues that we hadn't addressed in the initial ceasefire. So all of these things together, I think it does come into assertiveness, but I really think that we have to put ourselves first. But of course, it depends on what sort of person you are. If a lot of people say you're a selfish person, then it's probably a good idea to have a look at that and change some things. But if you're someone that does feel you let down a lot, then maybe it's time to start putting yourself first. And if it, if it is a case of it's social situations and you feel lonely or you feel that people are letting you down, then obviously material things are going to make you feel better, but at least there won't be the guilt. At least there won't be the guilt. So that's something. Um, I hope this video gets quite a lot of views. Uh, feel free to share it around. That applies to any of my videos. And thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts.